Hi, I'm Marcy Lundy. Today is Tuesday, December, oh, let's see, December 7th, <laughs> 2022. And this is the Cult of Kindness podcast. Now I paused because we are recording this at a different time. Uh, as you can see, I've got my wonderful guest here today, Celeste DeMilla, the author of Live Kind, Be Happy. Celeste, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, of course. So it was about two months ago that Celeste reached out to me and uh, she's also on the kindness journey. Uh, the book of the month is, like I said, her book, as she speaks our language, the language of kindness. Mm -hmm. And Celeste, if you would like to tell the audience a little bit about yourself, please go ahead. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Again, I'm so happy to be here and just delighted that you invited me onto your show. And I am a psychotherapist, author, and a kindness advocate. And um, I have been for the last few years writing about positive psychology, kindness, and also teaching about positive psychology and kindness. Um, so that's been a passion of mine. But <laughs> I think why I'm here today is, is the book that I wrote. And that is kind of an, a little interesting aside story. So, you know, I had been um, promoting the positive psychology for a while, but then when I turned 50, I mm -hmm. had a midlife crisis. And I was just feeling like I hadn't done anything of significance with my life. And I really wanted to live with more intention going forward. And so how I decided to do that was I began to purposefully practice kindness. And wow. yeah, this is so important to me because as, as you know, I'm sure kindness it's been a really core value of mine, but I realized that I didn't always live as if it were, you know, life just got in the way. I was too busy to be as kind as I really wanted to be. And so I felt yeah. like I had to purposefully practice it in order to really act on my value. And so I did this in a very small way. I just set up one small kindness challenge for myself every week. So yeah on a Monday, I might say, okay, Celeste, this week, you are going to do at least one random act of kindness every day. And then the I, next day, I would do something different. And um, so that I did this and these practices did not take a lot of time or energy out of my life, but they made a huge impact. Sure. I see the impact I was having on people around me. I mean, I was making people's lives a little easier, making right. people here, even just making people smile is, yeah. <laughs> and that was so gratifying to me. But beyond that, I could feel the impact it was having on me. I was happier. I was feeling excited about life again. And honestly, I hadn't felt that way for a long time. And oh, wow. This just made such an impact on me. I'm like, you know, I, this is what I want to write about. And so that's how Live Kind, Be Happy came about. And I worked on this with a colleague of mine, Louis Aloro, and together we really um, did a lot of research and put together a wonderful, really usable book with lots of simple practices for how you can create a kinder, happier world and a kinder and happier you. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. So uh, I want to correct myself in the beginning. It is actually Tuesday, December 6th. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, but your book, uh, I was telling you before we started, it was just so nice to read words uh, from what I consider to be a kindred spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. There was so many things inside of your book that I was able to relate to that uh I growing up even had the same experiences, you know, people telling me I'm too nice, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that was a crime. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so in the beginning, you talk about the midlife opportunity. Mm. Uh, could you explain that a little further? Mm, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, because I think it's so powerful. 
you know, when I, I had a midlife crisis, I think I was in the midst of this midlife crisis for a while and did not really realize it, but Mm -hmm. I had an experience where, um, I was at an airport and I was in the bathroom and I, I was at the sink and I couldn't get the water to flow. And a woman at a neighboring sink said, Oh, here, why don't you use, um, my, uh, my sink. And so I moved over and I used her sink and, Mm -hmm. and she was so nice to me and I what a nice lady. But then as she was leaving the restroom, she said to another woman waiting for the stalls, Oh, I just had to stop and tell you that you're beautiful. And my heart sank. I was like, (laughs) anything to me about how I look, you know, what do I look like chopped liver or or what? Right. Right. Yeah. I, I looked up at myself in the mirror and I'm like, well, I don't look bad for someone who's 50. And that's when it hit me that I was 50. I hadn't realized it. And that's when I realized I had already been in a midlife crisis for a while. Um, And uh, oh my gosh, you have to excuse me. I have allergies in my nose. Oh, no worries. (laughs) That's fine. It's that time of year. (laughs) Excuse me. I feel, you know, oh no. We're all imperfect and I you know I please excuse the uh <laughs> but um but anyway so I left that restroom kind of in a tailspin of oh my gosh you know my looks are going my life is going and I'm oh. I done with my life and you know so I really had been in that midlife crisis but this brought it to like ahead, you know, I'm in this crisis and what am I going to do? And right. as a psychotherapist, I, I tend to read a lot of different books on, you know, psychology. And I, I had a self-help book in my backpack called creating your best life by Caroline Adams Miller. And so I, I started reading that on the plane, mostly to distract myself because I was not in a good place. Oh, sure. <laughs> but, yeah. In her book, very early on, she mentioned that, you know, in modern life, we live to be, you know, so old, you know, in modern life that midlife is not really the end. It's, it's kind of a new beginning. And she mentioned the word midlife opportunity. And all I needed to do was hear that word to open myself up to, oh, I could choose to have a midlife crisis or I could choose to have a midlife opportunity. And that is something Mm -hmm. a choice, but oftentimes we get stuck in a negative place and we don't realize that we have a choice to turn that around and go positive with it. And so that opened me up that I can embrace this. I can go with this and make something beautiful out of this. And Absolutely. that is how I, I see that. And that is what I chose to do. I'm so glad. Yeah. You know, it's so funny once uh, we get to a certain age in our lives, I'm 44 and, <laughs> you know, I, I started to realize like once I hit 40, um, okay, you know, you want to have, you know, many things going on. You don't want to be one dimensional. And so, you know, for me, like kindness is something that was always a part of me, but for a long time, I would kind of shield that from people. And then as I got older, I realized, okay, you know, as you're getting older, what do you stand for and why not put kindness at the forefront? You know, you want to show that, yeah, you want to show that you're capable of helping other people with simply the little things. And instead of thinking about getting older, you know, concentrate on paying it forward in many ways and in simple ways. And so uh, reading that, I connected with that just, you know, as a woman getting older and how I wanted to show up in the world, you know, and not just get lost in the fact that I'm getting older, like to do more and help people. So I thought That's that was beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. And I'm so glad you were able to recognize that and own that and live that. And didn't it make a difference? I mean, it did, did. it yes. in yourself? Absolutely. Yes. And then, you know, it's like, uh, I like to talk about the positive domino effect. And I know in your book, uh, you use sort of a similar expression. And it's just 
a matter of it takes one person. It doesn't take a lot. We just have to get away from thinking of ourselves and, you know, like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. Well, what are our positives? And with those positives is pay it forward in kindness and love. Yeah, yeah. And like you, when I made that shift of, okay, I'm going to choose to practice kindness. This is something that I can do. And I focused on what I can give out instead of focusing. On oh my gosh, I'm getting older. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna think I'm cute anymore, and you know, all the negative <laughs> things that you know you start thinking of, and and people, you know, think of old people, and you think oh, people kind of you know don't give them respect and different things. By choosing to focus outward, I transformed my whole outlook, but also I was so much happier. And, and you don't need to have a midlife crisis to have that transition. You can do this at age 10, (laughs) whatever, because when we focus outward on others, that is where our true happiness comes from. And sometimes it takes us a long time to realize that some people never realize that, but if you realize that, and I hope our little podcast here will help Mm -hmm people to realize that because it's powerful. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I loved that you used uh, the words outrageously kind and <laughs> you're like, it wasn't that it was outrageous, but <laughs> uh, you know, it was just the gestures. So if you could explain uh, just the gestures that you started to do for others. Yeah, sure. Well, when I first started, I called it outrageous kindness because I was in that, oh my gosh, you know, I haven't been as kind as I wanted to be for years and I need to make up for this. And it was kind of like, you know, the correlation of a guy who's having a midlife crisis who goes out and and gets a 20 year old girlfriend. So it was kind of my um, midlife crisis opportunity burst. And So I was on vacation when I did this outrageous kindness. And so I did dozens of small kind acts, you know, things like um, writing, you know, wonderful text messages to people that I loved and just telling them Mm. about them, you know, just buying coffee for the person behind me in line, all the typical things that you think of doing, but I pushed myself to do dozens of these on a daily basis. And for about a week while I was on vacation, this was amazing. It, wow. <laughs> it <laughs> boosted my mood so much. And oh. I just was so happy and excited about life. But when I got home from vacation and I tried to be outrageously kind, it didn't work. Because really? I was back in normal life. I have my responsibilities and the excitement of, you know, being on vacation, it, it, it didn't work. Oh. So I actually let go of outrageous kindness at that point. And I realized that it was a good starting point, but sure. it wasn't a way that I could maintain this long-term. So I stepped back and I decided if I really want to be a kinder person for the rest of my life, I need to start small. I need to do this one small step at a time. So that's when I started doing just one small kindness challenge a week and was a game changer because even in my busy regular life, I was able to do this small kindness. And that gave me a success experience of, Oh, I did this. And, and it felt good knowing that I was doing, you know, something so important to me. But also I came to realize that even doing small kindnesses is powerful. It really does make impact in um, my life and the lives around me. And so there is no such thing as a small kindness. And so that's really what I propose now is I really challenge people to step up their kindness just a little bit because that's enough to make it. So... Yeah, absolutely. I know you're a licensed uh, marriage and family therapist. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering if you use that kindness in your practice. Mm. 
That is a great question. And I am actually not currently working as a psychotherapist. So oh. I, I do not use that in my practice. Um, and in fact, I am getting ready, ready to transition in my professional life. I am okay. feeling a real draw to work with seniors. Oh, and wow. Next year, what I'm hoping to do is focus on just teaching seniors how they can maintain their happiness and optimism and oh. um, just live their best life well into their golden years. And so oh, that is so beautiful. Thank you. And what I plan to do, because one of the things that seniors, we all need, but especially seniors need is they need to feel like they are making a difference. Sure. And so I plan to incorporate um, teaching them or together doing kind acts with them as right. part of how to help them maintain their best lives. And, you know, there's been so much research showing that seniors who volunteer are so much happier and healthier than seniors who mm -hmm. not do that. So yeah, I will definitely be using that. <laughs> I love that. Giving them a sense of purpose. Yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. I uh, actually, that's where we also speak the same language. I wanted to do uh, a kindness box course with seniors, and I still may do that uh, because, first of all, you know, they are, they have so much information and useful information. And we know in society, a lot of the times we just sort of push our elders to the side. Yeah. And, you know, one day, hopefully, we will all be older. And we don't want to be pushed to the side. So I think it's so important to value them and to get them in on, you know, these kindness acts. And like you were saying earlier, how it made you feel happy to do that. I'm sure it'll be the same with them. Mm, yeah, That's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We really do speak the same language. We do. It was so <laughs> funny going through the book. I was like, this is incredible. We literally are speaking the same language. <laughs> and it's so nice to know, like, you're not the only person in the world that feels that way, which you do realize that, but some days it's like, well, am I the only one trying to be kind in this world? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and you bring up a good point with that because when we look around on, you know, the news or whatever, mm -hmm. it really highlights what's wrong in the world, the people that are doing, you know, bad things. And that can really discourage us and make us lose faith in humanity. And yeah. so one of the things kindnesses you can actually do is to simply share stories of kindness yeah. because stories of kindness, they help spiral us up. They help remind us that there is good in the world and they help give us that sense of, you know, Oh, you know, Humanity is good, you know, and we need that. And we, because the media does not do it. I mean, they might have one token, you know, <laughs> one story at the very end, <laughs> but, you know, especially today, so many people just watch news all day long and that brings us down. So I think spreading stories of kindness is really a powerful spread it on social media. People put it out there, share, even if a little kindness that your spouse did for you or your child did tell people about it. You know? Exactly. So. Yes. I love when you said, when you first started that you would uh, just leave like a little note for your husband uh, <laughs> on a napkin. I think it was in that was so sweet. You know, it, it really is that simple, something very sweet and from the heart. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to go over these four points. Uh, again, I was just thinking to myself, okay, we're kindred spirits. <laughs> you uh, wrote that kindness is not about being a doormat. Mm -hmm. I think so many people fight against it. And I know for myself, I did at one point in my life. Um, Me too. It's true. It, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like, no, it actually takes a lot of strength to be kind, you know. Yes. Also, you said kindness is not weakness. Mm -hmm. Kindness is not indulgence. And kindness is not just for humans. Mm. So uh, what do you mean by kindness is not just for humans? Mm. 
Thank you for bringing up points. I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, so kindness is not just for humans because kindness benefits everyone and everything. So, you know, while we tend to think of kindness as being kind to other humans, humans are not the only living beings on this planet. There are animals and there is nature and animals and nature benefit from kindness just as much as humans do. And the other thing about animals and nature is they don't, they can't speak up for themselves. You know, a, a dog can't, you know, advocate for himself if he's being um, abused or tortured and, you know, animals on factory farms that are right. born there and, and, you know, just raised to, to be fed and, and not treated well, they, they can't speak up for themselves. So we right. need to speak up for, for animals. And then, you know, nature and the earth, you know, that's also living, breathing. And, you know, we, in our modern society, we know that with global warming and things that are happening to our earth, we are harming it. And that obviously is, is not even good for us. I mean, it's really destroying what we need. I mean, the nature gives back to us. And if we aren't being kind to it, you know, it, we can't have that reciprocal relationship. It's, it's going to harm us. It's going to bite us in the end. And it already oh, yeah. being that. So, so yeah, so I'm a big proponent of going beyond just being kind to humans, you know, so, and, yes. uh, and some simple little things you can do to, to be kind to animals in the earth is well, number one, your right. coffee shops, buy a, a um, reusable cup and bring that with mm-hmm. you make your coffee in that cup that's that's a simple thing you can do and you know if you're going to adopt a pet obviously you know choose um don't choose a pet that's from a um a pet shop get one that's you know that needs a home so things like that are simple but powerful so right i thought that was so wonderful to bring up because you know especially someone's just starting you know a kindness journey They aren't necessarily Mm -hmm. thinking it includes our planet and it includes, you know, animals. And you're right. uh, The planet, as well as animals, they are, that's something we have to take the initiative with because we're the ones who can help make that better or help make an animal's life better. So, you know, just kudos for bringing that up because I think a lot of people don't think of that, you know, and when you start to become positive and more kind, then you unconsciously, like you said, you will opt to buy your coffee and get a cup that's recyclable instead of just, you know, just doing the things you were doing before. It'll just become an unconscious um, effort on your end and we'll all be better for that. Yeah. Could I tell you a funny story about being kind to animals? Sure. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, being kind to animals, we need to go, we often think of being kind to dogs and, and animals like that, but it goes all the way to being kind to bugs and, and spiders. And oh. you, know, <laughs> I, you know, people don't think about that, but you know, in the past, I used to think nothing about swatting a spider or flushing it down the toilet in my head. <laughs> right. But since I started practicing kindness, now when I see a spider, my poor husband, because I don't like to do this. I'm like, honey, can you save a life? And he knows oh. what that means. He has to go in the bathroom or whatever and collect the little spider and put it outside. Oh, and wow. the simplest little thing, it doesn't, t- it takes, you know, a minute, but really, you know, a spider is a living being. And sure. you know, we, if we respect all life, it, it matters. And I, a lot of people laugh at me for doing this or think this is taking <laughs> a little bit too far no. but to me even things like that it just matters so yes I love that and you know I'm guilty I have serious arachnophobia and <laughs> I often think you know even if it's just like a fly it's like well open the window and just let them out you know I'm not that great at it yet but I strive to be because it's something I think about you know like Yes, I'm afraid of it because it's in the house, but you know, just 
set it free. You don't, you yeah, don't have to yeah. end his life. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love it. I Work sh- in progress on this side, but I love it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Hey, you're that. okay. Cause I can't do it myself. I make my husband do it. <laughs> same kind of <laughs> that's so great I love it yes yeah. and you know there's some people like you know they say I, I wouldn't hurt a fly and they literally do not they just set it free <laughs> yeah yeah but it is unusual I think going that far is unusual in our society yeah. there are some societies where you know they they naturally do that they do respect yeah. life but in our society we don't necessarily do that so you know yeah start that <laughs> Yeah, something to work on. <laughs> uh, you say in your book, give yourself permission to be human. I think mm. that's so important to say, especially when it comes to kindness, because a lot of people feel, well, to be kind, I need to be perfect. And mm. that's just not the case. So uh, would you like to elaborate on what it means to give yourself permission to be human? Absolutely. And I'll start with right now, I've been feeling really self-conscious because my allergies, my nose came up. <laughs> I'm like, so I need to give myself permission to be human to be exactly. And you I'm just like, oh, people beautiful. are going to look and they're going to see me and they're going to go, what's wrong with that lady? And, but I'm sorry. <laughs> and so now beautiful, you know, so yes, just oh, well, allow thank yourself you, permission thank to be you. human. <laughs> But that is a good example of giving yourself permission to be human. So I am personally judging myself and probably most people are going to maybe notice, but they're not going to judge me for that. They're going to think, oh, you know, whatever, she's got allergies, not a big deal, but I'm myself for that. And so I need right now to say, okay, Celeste, I need to give you permission to be human. We all do things that are imperfect and that's okay. And beyond that, just giving yourself permission also to experience all um, feelings and emotions, because many of us think that, you know, we have to be happy all the time and we don't. The human, we, don't. No. we have a full range of human emotions and every single one of us experiences all of them, you know, mm-hmm sadness, anger, shame, up to happiness and joy. And if we think that some emotions are bad or wrong, then we're going to try to not let ourselves feel those emotions. And we're going to push ourselves through and try to be happy all the time. That backfires. Oh yeah. When we don't allow ourselves to experience our emotions, they get stuck. If we allow ourselves and we, we, we say it's okay to feel all these emotions and we let ourselves feel them, they move through us and, right. and we can let those emotions move through us and not get stuck in them. We're actually going to be a lot happier and we're actually going to naturally be a lot kinder. So we really need to, it's, it's kind to let yourself experience all emotions and not try to be happy all the time. And you know, not put, like you said, if you're not the kindest person one day, or if you do something that's not kind one day, you know, give yourself a break for that and say, okay, yes. I'm human. And I'm trying, but you know, some days I have bad days. I know for exactly. me, it's, headaches, it's really hard for me to be kind. So yeah. <laughs> you know, give yourself a break. So, right. Yeah, yeah. It literally has to start with all of us being kind to ourselves. Yeah. 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 I also love where you talked about the kindness boomerang. So through multiple acts of kindness from one individual, it can touch many others. And uh, Mm. that's uh, something in my podcast I love to refer to as the positive domino effect. Mm. And I think people don't understand it's that simple, but like you were describing earlier, working with seniors, you know, that will probably create the positive domino effect. Yeah. Yeah. I love your, your, the positive domino effect. That's a wonderful name. And I think it's based, like you said, the same thing. And that is that when we do one act of kindness, so that kindness doesn't just affect us and the person that we're doing it for it does. So first of all, when we do an act of kindness, 
our body produces feel good hormones like serotonin and oxytocin that makes us feel good. So we get a benefit from it. The person right. we do the kindness for gets the same benefit. They get that same boost of serotonin and oxytocin. And even anyone observing that kind act also gets that same boost of oxytocin. So all of those um, individuals, and, and there might be many watchers, get that boost of feel-good chemicals. What feel-good chemicals do is they elevate us. They make us feel good. And when we feel good, we want to be kind to others. We want to pay forward. So all of those people, you for doing the kindness, the person you did the kindness for, the people who observed that kindness are all going to be more likely to do kind acts for others going forward. So you have, you know, three groups of individuals who are going to go out and do more kind acts because of that one kind act that you did. And then of course, the kind acts that that you and the other, the people you did the kindness for, the people who observed the kindness do for others, they're also going to create the same feel good hormones it's in the same way. And so it just goes on and on and on. I and love it. Yeah. Powerful. And even if it's a simple, small act of kindness, like smiling and saying hello to someone, even something as small as that can create that domino effect. So yes. it, we have incredible power to make a difference in this world. Let me tell you, we do. And it doesn't take a lot of time or energy either with even just one small kind act, we can create a ripple of kindness that, that goes on. So that's so beautiful. I never realized or thought about, you know, just if someone observes a kind act that they can go on and, you know, spread kindness also. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been shown um, in research. So it's, it really does happen. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. And you talk about micro moments of Mm. love. Yes. are vital to our health and happiness. And, you know, that's sort of what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. If you observe the moments or you're the individual experiencing the moment, you're automatically elevated to a kind level and you go on to pay it forward. Yeah. I love that you brought up micro moments of love because that is a beautiful, powerful concept that was popularized by uh, researcher Barbara, Barbara Fredrickson. And okay. um, what they are is whenever we have just small moment of connection with either a loved one or a stranger where we, you know, we might share a, a funny laugh or um, a compliment, you know, we, we compliment someone and they, they get uplifted. So we share this shared connection. It's okay calls this a micro moment of love and these micro moments of love they feed us in deep ways and it's so easy to spread these moments all it means is when we're out and about in the world Mm -hmm. instead of being focused inward on ourselves or looking at our cell phone that we focus outward and we try to connect with people so if you go to a coffee shop you know, smile and be friendly to the barista, give them a, they made you an awesome latte. (laughs) Little things like that really make a difference. Or if you're at the grocery store, you know, interact with the clerk, but it's also done at home where, you know, often with our loved ones, we're the least friendly because we're just, (laughs) you know, we're used to that, but so make it a point to, you know, do little things to just connect with your loved ones on a daily basis, you know, over and above what you normally do little things, you know, like when I started purposely practicing kindness, you mentioned me writing little notes to my husband, things like this for him all the time. And he does it to me. I love it. Yeah. It's our relationship has really grown stronger from just these little connect. We are trying to be kinder to each other and we, it matters. So sure does. Yes. Uh, You also wrote about being curious about others. 
I think mm. that a lot of the times people shy away from that because they are trying not to be invasive. Uh, yeah. But there is definitely a way to do it without making others feel creepy or creeped out. Uh, can you explain uh, ways that you personally may have gone into the world being curious about others? Yeah. Um, well, let me think. Well, I think for me, I just really try to observe people when I'm out and about. And I really look at what is, what is cool and unique about this person. I really, I really try to observe people. And then when I notice something cool or unique about them, I'll comment. it. Like I remember this one woman at the grocery store, she had, her nails were just like beautifully done. And mm-hmm. I was like, observe, I'm like, I'm like, oh, your nails are, are just so awesome. I love them. And she just brightened up oh, oh. myself and, you know, always, and she <clears throat> was really so excited that I noticed that. And it really made her happy because she had taken the time to do these nails herself and, and people want to be noticed for these things. And I think, <laughs> excuse me, it's fine. you can tell when somebody wants to be noticed, like if they're wearing something really unusual or they have an unusual hairstyle or, you know, I think they want to be noticed. Um, Commenting on that in a very light way. It's right. We we wanna make sure that we're we're not coming across as like we're hitting on them or or it's just in a fun, and it's your attitude. If you have an attitude, I love this about you, but I just wanted to share that I love this. <laughs> it's going to come across positive and in a positive way. So for sure. And that goes with uh, what you were saying earlier, you know, of looking in your phone, look up and see, you know, who you're walking amongst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And people do want to be noticed, or like you said, if they have something unique about themselves, they certainly want to be recognized for that. And I think there's so many people who get hung up on, oh, well, I'm not going to say anything. We'll say something, you know, like, just think about if it were you, you'd want someone to compliment you. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. My, my, dog, my dog just started barking. And again, <laughs> okay. I there don't he goes. But, but, you know, <laughs> here I go. I need to again, have those, um, you know, that, that, you know, self-compassion for myself. Um, right. <laughs> but anyway yes people want to be noticed people all of us we want to feel like we matter and that is all of us go out into the world thinking you know i want to feel seen i want to feel like i matter so if we notice someone and we comment on them, we are saying to them, you matter. I notice you and I feel that you have value in this world. <coughs> that what yes. we all want. I mean, and so, yeah. And so I don't shy away. I mean, when I first saw you, I'm like, oh, your hair is so beautiful. <laughs> first thing I said, because I just thought your hair was gorgeous. And I wanted you to know that I just, oh, thank you. Oh, you have this beautiful hair and, and uh, <laughs> let you know that. So. Yes. And I'm the same way. I mean, I actually, it's like when I see people and I admire something on them, I can't wait to tell them, you know, it's just, yeah. I really don't think twice about it because, if, and when you say it right away, it's from the heart, you know, if you're like, it oh, well, should I, shouldn't I, it's going to perhaps come out awkwardly, you know? So, you know, yeah. if you're it, just go ahead and say it. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and I and and you come across as very genuine, and I think that genuine and really doing it sincerely is important because people can tell if we're doing it like we don't really mean it or we want something from them, and that's not genuine. So, so that don't do, you know, it's yeah, absolutely from the heart, and it needs. Right sincere. And if you're doing that, I don't think you can go wrong. So absolutely. I agree. Um, I wanted to 
bring up your, uh, you talked about loving kindness meditation, uh, mm-hmm. opening your heart to suffering. And when we open, we heal and silence your inner fixer. Mm-hmm. All of the above, I think, are pretty difficult for the average human. <laughs> uh, me too, me too. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> I, I admit it's all hard for me too. So we don't, you know. Right. Please don't judge yourself because these are, these are tough. These are things to strive for and that we have to work on every day. And I really believe that we can cultivate greater kindness, that we can grow our kindness muscle by purposefully practicing it in small ways. So we don't really want to go from, you know, we don't want to go overnight to being outrageously kind. Like I tried to do in the beginning, we just want to make it one <laughs> small step. And if we right. can, small steps, it matters, but, but you mentioned some really important things and that are in live kind, be happy. And I'd like to go down the loving kindness um, path. If you're okay with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So loving kindness is actually um, an ancient practice that comes from the Buddha and practice where it's an internal training your mind to be more kind and compassionate. And well, to be kind and compassionate outwardly in the world, we need to start with our mind. We need to cultivate um, a kinder and compassionate um, way of thinking. And so that's what loving kindness does. It cultivates our minds to be more Um, generous and compassionate. So how you practice loving kindness, it it is a way to um, you, whenever you think of somebody or meet somebody, you can do this as um, as a meditation or you can do it in daily life. Okay. With daily life. So in daily life, you just come up with a saying such as, I wish for you to be happy. Then Mm -hmm. as you about your day everyone you see with your eyes you simply send them that wish silently to them out loud so you might be out walking your dog and each person that you pass you think i wish for you to be happy you can Mm. only them verbally but in your mind you're also saying to them i wish for you to be happy you might being in line at a grocery store each person one at a time in the line you simply say, I wish for you to be happy, you know, woman with the baby on her back, or I wish for you to be happy, you know, clerk with the beautiful red hair. And Mm -hmm. you also send that to yourself. You tell yourself, you know, may I be happy? I wish for you to be happy today. Mm -hmm. And this simple practice feels like it will do nothing. How is that going to make a difference? How Mm -hmm. are you going to transform your thinking from that? But it does it mm-hmm. difference and i think it is really something you have to do to um, experience the difference from because when i first did it i just did it because well i'll try this i don't think there's going to be anything that's gonna be. <laughs> and i really noticed the impact of it oh so, that is so do beautiful. it as a meditation you simply sit down you close right. your eyes you bring someone to mind and you send them those phrases, you know, I wish for you to be happy. I wish for you to be healthy. And then you bring another person to mind and you send them those phrases. This is a powerful practice that has been researched and shown to have amazing benefits for us. And, and it will help you to be kinder in the world as well. That is so special, you know, because I'm thinking as you're thinking that, of course, you're going to look pleasant. And people who, you know, you're maybe not even mentally offering that to will see you and they'll say, oh, you know, she looks so pleasant, uh, you know, and then that puts them in a good mood. That's just so wonderful mm. and, and not invasive at all <laughs> for those it's, that don't want to be invasive. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. I love what you said about how it makes you look pleasant because it does actually change your physical demeanor. And I 
have a story actually where um, I share this in Live Kind Be Happy, where I woke up in a bad mood and mm -hmm. I started practicing loving kindness. I started with my husband. I started, you know, wishing him, you know, love and happiness and wishing myself um, love and kindness. And then I went to a coffee shop to work on, on the book, Live Kind Be Happy. And while I was at the coffee shop, I wrote for a little while, but then I stopped and I just sat there and each person in the coffee shop, I silently sent them loving phrases. You know, I, I, first, I didn't stare at them. I kind of casually looked and, <laughs> you know, cause you don't want to be a freak and, you know, oh, you know, <laughs> very subtly and casually sent each person in the coffee shop, you know, loving kindness. And mm. that I was feeling so happy from doing that and so peaceful and calm that I decided to actually write out, you know, I wish for you to be happy on right. pieces of paper and hand that to several people in the coffee shop. Oh. One person that I handed this to was a woman who, before I even said anything, she said, thank you for, for what you handed to me. And oh. I went to the bathroom and I came out and she approached me and she said, I just had to tell you when you were sitting in the coffee shop, I read energy and oh, tell you had such good energy. And you handed me that paper. And I said, thank you before you even said anything, because I knew if you were going to be giving me something that it was going to be good. And oh my God, it was just like, <laughs> that is and, and this was coming from me having, having woken up in a bad mood and with this negative energy, wow. self transform that with loving kindness that someone even noticed on my countenance that I had, you know, was in this pleasant space and oh. I, it was just such a transformative experience for me and, and realizing how powerful loving kindness is. So I just. That is a story that I'll never forget because yes. that yeah. is so powerful and so beautiful. And, Thank you know, you. It, it sort of says that uh, because I think you have beautiful energy also. And so I think it's probably one of those things where even if you wake up and you're feeling, you know, a certain sort of way that your overall energy just surpasses whatever that mood is. And then when you consciously make the effort to put more kindness into the world, you're just, your aura is just beyond glowing. That is so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and you know, I wanna go back to something you mentioned in the beginning of the midlife opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the that is, and I think we also already talked about this, but I really think every day we have the choice between, maybe not crisis and opportunity, but the choice between, you know, negativity and opportunity. We right. have the power to choose every day to be kind to ourselves, to be kind to others. And we can actually look at this as a conscious choice first thing in the morning. And this is actually a practice where we can get up and we can say, okay, today I am going to choose to practice kindness. Today I'm going to choose to practice being kind to myself. Today, I'm going to choose, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to spread kindness into the world. And right. if we don't choose that in the morning, we're just going to roll with the day and it's often going to take us down a negative um, spiral. So yes. I love taking your morning to really just making a conscious choice to choose kindness first thing. And that can make a huge difference in that day and the energy that you put out and the positivity and the kindness you spread into the world. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Oprah, um, she said that one of the first things she does when she wakes up in the morning, is says, thank you, because it's, you know, another opportunity to go into the world and, you know, be kind and, and offer others, you know, whatever it is that you can offer this positive and to look at it as a gift, just like you were saying, where you start off in that positive light, mm. the day goes on to be nothing but positive. You know, even if you have a couple of things that try to, you know, change the path, you started off on the right foot. 
That's beautiful. I love that. And I love Oprah and she just puts out so much positivity. And I know. <laughs> she's wonderful. So yeah. She Thank is. you for sharing that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So one of the things, Celeste, when I first received your book, I actually had happy tears because uh, you had written on the paper, in the end, only <sighs> kindness matters. And that song by Jewel, uh, I believe it's Hands, that's one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, and that line of the song is something that I, you know, it's just always in my heart. And, you know, when I saw that, I said, this is, this is one of my people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and you mentioned that, that to me. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that because that is probably one of my favorite quotes in the world. And I'm so thankful for putting such positive, beautiful, inspiring music out there. And that's, yeah. and the reason why I love that quote is because I believe it. When I'm in bed, I know the only thing that is going to matter to me is knowing that I lived a kind life. None of these other things that I think are important, you know, as I'm going about my day, you know, how much right. I make, how much stuff I have, how many vacations I went on, how cute I look, what <laughs> I have, all those things on a daily basis, you know, that we think are so important. They really don't matter in the long run. What yeah. matter to me in when I'm on my deathbed is knowing that I treated everyone I came in contact with, with kindness, compassion, and respect that yes. made a difference in the world, that I made a difference in the lives of the people that I love, that I made a difference in the lives of everyone that I interacted with each day. You know, those mm -hmm. are gonna, that are going to make me feel, okay, I'm ready to go now. And right. this quote, I love it because um, I forget, you know, on a daily basis, I forget. <laughs> this isn't how important you know I'm normal I'm human and so this yes. quote brings me back to what really is important and we need those reminders I need those reminders honestly yes. even though I've written a book on or co-written I'm sorry Lewis you we brought this together on kindness <laughs> I forget and so I know that we need those reminders so yes so beautiful I just wanted to end with those words because, uh, like I said, I just lit up when I saw that you'd written that. Uh, it's something I also believe in. And you're right. Um, when we're at the end of our life and after we pass away, what people will remember is how we were with them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, again, our book of the month for December is by Celeste Danilla, our guest live kind, be happy. And Celeste, are there any events or information that you'd like to share with the audience before we go? Oh, uh, well, I'll just put out my, my website. Uh, my website is just my name, celestedemilla.com. And I actually have a lot of freebies on my website. I have, um, you know, free chapters of live kind, be happy. And also I have a free, um, a happiness starter kit that you can download, which is, which is lovely. So that's it. Other than that, I I'm just, my only events for December are just being with family and connecting with, with loved ones. So that's, what's going on for me for, for this month. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on uh, my, the book that you wrote. It was just spoke to my heart wonderfully. And I, know that it will speak to our cult of kindness audience the same way. So thank yeah. you so very much. Well, thank you so very much. This has been a pleasure. You are just a beautiful soul. And I am so grateful to you for everything that you're putting out into the world and don't stop because we, the world needs this. So keep it up and, and bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, likewise. Thank you. Yeah. All right.